Hello, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome. My name is Sheehan Rab. I am so blessed and happy to be here with you today. That's what she said. Today, I'm going to show you how to give yourself a shot in your gluteus muscle if you find yourself in the circumstance such as myself, where I usually go into the hospital to get my Lupron injections. However, with the COVID-19 crisis pandemic, they don't want me to go into the hospital. So they had the Lupron shipped to my house. And it, it has been a really hard, long ordeal to get the injection at my house because I had to go through so many different barriers with the insurance company, the pharmacy, and then it was switched to four different specialty pharmacies and they needed multiple prescriptions from my doctor because they couldn't be transferred. And then they also needed um, approval for my doctor, like as if I was getting an MRI done, a, a pre-authorization. So I am actually two weeks late, two full weeks late in getting my Lupron, which in my circumstance is actually very dangerous because I'm on a medication called letrozole, which shuts down the hormones in the pituitary gland from making estrogen. And the Lupron shuts down my ovaries from making estrogen. So if my ovaries start their process again and um, the letrozole is affecting my brain, it could actually cause really bad damage to my body. So I have actually been pretty stressed out about this and I knew it was happening because 10 days before I was scheduled for the letrozole, I also had my oncologist appointment. They called me to change it to a telemed appointment. So during that phone call, I said, okay, well, in addition to seeing my oncologist, I'm also supposed to get the, letro um, the Lupron shot. So I need to know how to go about getting it. Do I get it sent to my house? Do I come into the hospital? And they told me not to go into the hospital. They would get back to me. It took many phone calls every day. And finally, the day before my appointment and the day it was due, I finally was able to get in touch with my oncologist. You would think it would be easier, but unfortunately with these big cancer centers, you have to go through so many hoops just to get in touch with one person. It takes me approximately 25 minutes every single phone call I'm in before I even get to speak to the person I'm trying to speak to. And then it always requires, um, I leave an email message and they call me back. So there's never direct communication. There's always many different people in between and it is highly stressful. In addition to having the challenges getting the Lupron and knowing that I could be potentially damaging my body, um, I've also been dealing with the stress of not having my medical records released to disability. Since January, I have not received a paycheck from disability or had my benefits covered even though I had surgery in February and my oncologist said in January, the soonest I could consider going back to work was June. So this is all documented. It's all up to the physicians. And unfortunately, between MD Anderson Cooper and MRO, the medical records, the third party vendor, They've had me fill out six different release forms and every time they keep denying it with another bogus reason. One reason was they, they wanted me to write their own address freehand on the release form, 
without even having a line to write it on. So I called them and I said, where do you want me to put it? Should I just scribble it on the side of the page, on the top of the page? And then after being transferred around to multiple people, they said, oh no, actually this release form's perfect. So the last I heard, it was approved. And now just two days ago, I was doing my due diligence with the pharmacies, with disability, and I called the Hartford, who actually the representative who helps me there has been wonderful. She knows how hard I have been trying to get them my records. And when I was on the phone with her two days ago, and she told me that now they denied releasing them again, because they're saying that the documents I submitted are conflicting each other. So they've got me cornered in a lose, 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 lose situation. And I spoke to my oncologist about this and I told him that the stress that I'm under right now, not being able to get the medicine I need, not being able to be paid the disability benefits that I have worked hard to acquire, I don't have a net. I'm not married with a husband to take care of me. I don't come from millionaire families, um, nor do I expect free handouts from anyone, including my family. I pray to lend and not borrow, and I've worked my butt off in the healthcare profession, taking care of thousands, tens of thousands of people to be in a position where I'm blessed enough to have these benefits and now for them to just not release my records and make it impossible for me to get the medication I need. There's actually a term my oncologist told me called financial toxicity, which the patient and families have been studied to become more sick and stressed after the disease has ended because of the financial burden and um, continual stress that they're going through from the residual effects of the disease. And um, dis-ease, just dissect that word for a moment. How can I ever be in a state of ease if I am not safe, protected, and provided for? I will constantly be diseased if these things aren't taken care of. So I asked my oncologist as well, how can I even get back to work in June if I'm on the phone for six or eight hours a day trying to resolve issues with my care? Um, and he agreed, he, he just, he said his hands were tied. And unfortunately, he knows because he used to be in private practice. And back then, it was the doctor, their nursing staff, and their office staff. And everyone on the team intimately knew all of the patients and their families. And now that these giant institutions have gobbled up all the physicians' private practices, there's such big infrastructures and conglomerates that everybody has their small piece to take care of. And they do that small piece and they check the box and they pass it off to someone else and just assume that it was done. By separating everybody in all these small pieces, it makes it virtually impossible for the patient to have ease. Rather than the doctor in the doctor's office being the quarterback who controls the care, I have been put in a situation where the doctor's calling me, the, sorry, not the doctor, the doctor's nurse is calling me and asking me what is going on with the insurance company and my prescription. And then I have to call four different numbers to get in touch with anybody. So yeah, it's crippling, it's exhausting, it's aggravating. And two days ago, I was on the phone with Miss Lee from my disability insurance, and she told me the, this issue with MRO after I had been on the phone with my doctor um, 
regarding the Lupron and not getting it. And I just, I started to have an, a panic attack. And it was so bad, I, I couldn't breathe. I collapsed to my knees. I was in the ground, in the grass, in the earth, just crying and sobbing. I felt like I was, my hands were numb, tingling. I was just like, <laughs> I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. It was true panic. Luckily, I called my dad. He helped ground me in addition to laying in the earth and I was able to come inside, splash water on my face, and I had to take a medication to help me relax, which the only time I ever do that is if I actually have to have a painful procedure done. I don't typically take any relaxing medication um, unless it is for a physical, like muscle relaxing relief, not for nerves. Because I do a lot of processes to release my emotions. And although day in and day out, I've been able to take it, take it, take it. I just got to the breaking point two days ago and couldn't take it anymore. And so for all of my fellow patients, no matter what you what dis-ease you may have or be going through right now, I send my love, heart, acknowledgement to you and let you know that I'm gonna use my voice and power to help change this system because it's a joke. And I love you. We have to stand together and not give up on our doctors or our health healthcare team because it's not their fault that they're a part of a broken sick system and I know firsthand working behind the scenes for half of my life all of my adult life I've been in the trenches in the hospital and I know it it crippled me um, when you love and care about people and then you see that you don't have the right supplies or staff and you see that the administration is being stacked with non-clinical people who are getting paid to make clinical decisions, um, it, it makes your job and your life impossible. So I had to get out and get in the medical device industry. And thank God I work for a company called Boston Scientific when I found out that I had stage three breast cancer because I have these incredible disability benefits that I would not have gotten if I was still in the hospital. It's a shame, but we don't take care of our healthcare workers when they get sick. You would think, oh, they get benefits unlimited, but that's not the case. Um, at least not from what I've heard in the breast cancer support groups um, that I've been in, that they tell me firsthand they've had to go to back to work early during radiation or during chemo. Not only our healthcare workers, but another friend of mine who is a teacher. Teachers in New Jersey do not get bis disability insurance. It's disgraceful. My friend has stage four cancer and she has to go in and teach. We're not taking care of, of those who are taking care of our children and our sick. And it's just disgraceful as it is society. So as you have the time at home to reflect with your masks on, I just ask you to consider the life of the people who have those masks on day in and day out, whether it be the healthcare practitioners who are scrubbed into procedures or the sick patient on chemo who doesn't have a healthy immune system that you can get sick. Just think about them. They might not have the luxury of this ending when the pandemic ends as you do. This is their life. I bow, honor, love, and respect all of you. We're all in this together. So let's get down to business of giving the shot. So first of all, hand hygiene is important. So right now my hands are considered dirty even though I just washed them. 
they're dirty because I'm touching the outside of this box. And it's always important that you read all of the instructions about the medication before you give it to yourself. See, as I open this box here, there is alcohol pads, a syringe, a needle, and it looks like there's a liquid on this side and liquid on that side. So, even though I've worked in healthcare forever, I've given a million shots, I don't know this particular brand. So, I'm going to leave it in its container while I look at the instructions that tell me how to set up the injection. Doing this live for you guys, so you can see what we do here, okay? So first it says you visually inspect the powder. Don't use it if there's clumping in here. See this powder? Looks to me like it's all fine powder. I don't see any clumping or caking evident. Okay, now we screw the white plunger into the end of the stopper until it begins to turn. So in the tray, there's a white plunger. I'm gonna put it in the stopper, screw it in. You can see it's turning. And I can actually see a little plunger starting to go down. So let's see what it says. Now in the image, it's held upright as well. So I'm gonna hold it upright. And it says, hold the syringe upright, release the dilutant by slowly pushing six to eight seconds the plunger until the first stopper is at the blue line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds. We're at the blue line. Keep it upright and mix the micro, micro spheres or the powder. So we're mixy, mixy, mixy. The suspension appears milky. Looks pretty milky to me. I don't know about you guys. Okay, it says if there's any clumping, you can tap it. Tap, 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 tippity tap, tap, tap. Okay, if the powder has not gone into suspension, you're not to use it. I'm gonna fully inspect it. It's important you also inspect the date. It doesn't say this, but right here I can see the expiration date is June 22nd, or sorry, June 20th, 2022. And how funny, my birthday's June 20th. And my favorite number was 22, playing basketball. So we have a lot of, and my dad's birthday's on the 22nd, Kylie's birthday's on the 22nd. I'm taking this as a great omen, as I'm about to give myself a shot. <laughs> okay, so we hold it upright. With the opposite hand, pull the needle cap upward without twisting. Okay, keep the syringe upright and you want to advance it until some of the liquid expels out of the tip. So I'm pushing up here and they want me to take the cap off, okay? And you can see with my hand, my pinky here, I'm just slowly pushing up the syringe right up to release any air, tapping gently as I push. And you're gonna see at the tip of the needle, a little drip of the solution. There we go. See those drips? Got it. So now we have the air purged, okay? I'm ready to go. I'm going to set this down so the needle's not touching anything. So I have it like this.
I'm gonna get my alcohol pad ready, set it down like this. Now, when you're giving yourself a glute or butt injection, what you wanna do is take a cheek and you're gonna divide it into four. So half, half, and you're gonna go in the right upper quadrant of the four. So one, four, like an X. I'm gonna go into this corner and make sure that I get the shot in the muscle right here, okay? And so you can see if you put your weight on that leg, it makes the muscle tense. So when I give the shot, I'm gonna step in the opposite leg, the left leg, so this muscle relaxes. Not going to be scared, okay? So I have my mark. Now I'm gonna practice the hand hygiene again. Really cleaning my hands. gonna get the alcohol pad and I'm gonna rub in a circular motion right where we're gonna give it oh you see a little bit of my hiney everyone has a butt don't be weird okay all right now I'm stepping into the left leg I'm just gonna take this one two three right in I'm gonna draw back and then just inject. Inject, 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 inject. One, two, three, pull straight out, done. Bada bing, bada boom. And you see this, it's a cap that protects the needle so you and no one else will get stuck. Done, that's it. That is what they have me drive up to the hospital, wait three hours and have a nurse do it, all so that they can get billed for it. It's a bunch of crap. That took me 10 seconds to do at home and it would have been faster if I wasn't showing you guys the entire time. But it just sucks. It sucks that we have to have a system like this. It sucks that they have to make everything so difficult for the patients, but I hope, pray, and know in my heart that together we can make things better. I promise you I will continue to use my voice for those that follow me and help make the systems better for all patients, all providers, all the families, which impacts all of us on the earth. Thank you for helping me on this mission. I love you. Thank you for staying with me on this journey. Your prayers, our prayers are coming true. I am taking this time at home right now to try and strengthen my body by doing at-home yoga. And I even did my very first full 30-minute exercise routine, um, taking advantage of all of the wonderful people out there who are putting their services online. My Great friend Jenny did an amazing yoga class the other day. I've been taking them with just all different practitioners. Kayleen Callahan from Golden Buddha Yoga. Um, Bethany Lyons from Lion's Den. I just, I love all different styles and techniques. And, you know, there's a saying in medicine, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So it's important that we have different tools in our toolbox so that we're not smashing everything the same. So for me, it's important that I have yoga, meditation, walking in nature, dancing, swimming, music. I have all these different tools that help with my health um, and self-care that I wasn't giving myself the time for before I was in this state of dis-ease nice warm Epsom salt baths, just relaxing, letting myself be at easeful, 
staying in faith, knowing that all is happening for me and not to me. Thank you, God. Thank you all for being here with me. I love you. God bless you. That's what she said. Mwah.